everyone, it's Kelsey. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is just a simple paint with me. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much for watching my video. And if you're already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for subscribing and I hope you enjoy the video. So today I'm gonna to be painting a simple painting of a candle in a window with greenery in the background. I've been really inspired by these nature scenes, so I wanna draw something simple and green. So I was gonna gold leaf the flames of the candle, but then I decided not to because it would be my luck that I would get the whole painting done and then royally mess up the gold leaf. As you guys know, I'm very young in my artistic journey due to going to school for like 4,000 years. So I stopped creating art in high school when I started playing guitar nonstop. And after that, I was off to music school and then eventually to law school. So anyway, my point is that I've come to learn that mixing colors is not only a way to get the right color, but to explore new combinations. Sometimes I look at my palette paper and I think about how beautiful it is because of all the color combinations and brush strokes. So maybe one of these days my video will be just of my palette. I've wondered for a while why my paintings are so flat and untextured, but then I started becoming more free in the direction of my brush strokes and found out that that creates a lot of texture, especially when you're painting bushes and trees. So I wanted to make it look like the sun was shining on part of the bushes and this part was going to be right behind the candle so I wanted to add some dimension there. And actually I did this part with a sponge and it worked out super well. It created the soft blurry edges that I wanted. So the sky was sort of challenging. When you look at trees, where the blue meets the green is obvious, but there's parts of the blue sky that shine through the trees. It was hard to depict this because it had to be random, but I've also noticed that there is some sort of order to it. It's not a huge round spot of blue, naturally, but it's also not tiny specks either. So we painted the green, and we have painted a lovely background for our iron and our candle. But, quick painting break to tell you guys what happened to me over the weekend. Me and my husband normally go grocery shopping on Saturdays, and I normally get hungry, which then requires us to buy more groceries so I have a snack on the way home. Not really a good idea when groceries are super expensive now, and you can't even get kiwis for like less than 10 bucks. Like, what is that about? So I brought along an Ezekiel 4.9 English muffin. Well, it has huge grains in it. Now, I know you're wondering, why are you telling me about these huge grains that are in this Ezekiel 4.9 bread? These are important plot points, ladies and gentlemen. It's five o'clock on Saturday, and I just got my chai tea latte, and I was eating my little English muffin, and life was good. But then it came crashing down because one of those stupid grains got stuck, like right here. So I was like, Huh, whatever, I got a chai tea latte, I'll just burn that thing out and it'll be fine. I drank my whole chai tea latte and it was still there. So I was like, okay, whatever, it's fine. So then like eight o'clock rolls around and I had a huge salad and I was like, surely, surely by then all this salad and romaine and carrots and stuff, we'll just wash it on down and we'll all be good. False. This thing was like cemented on my esophagus. Like this thing would not give up. Like it would not. So I'm like chugging tea. I'm like hacking and coughing and spitting and all that stuff, trying to get this stupid thing out of my esophagus. I mean, this thing, this thing is resilient. Good thing it was actually good for me. So maybe now I'm a complete protein. This is like my like Iron Man moment where I have something surgically attached to me in my esophagus that makes me like super healthy. Maybe, maybe it's gone. Maybe it's floated off into the great blue yonder. So there's that. So I should probably get back to painting now. Mm -hmm. 
So now that you know about my superpower lodged in my esophagus, let's talk about the painting. I wanted to make massive brown window panes made of wood but I also wanted it to be at an angle, so that was kind of difficult. And after that, I wanted some wrought iron window panes. So I wanted to talk about something I learned about my art from studying Job. So the book of Job in the Old Testament is about a man who seemingly got caught in the crosshairs of God's heavenly counsel and Satan. This cosmic bet takes place where Satan bets that if God allowed Job to lose everything, Job would curse God. And so Job loses his family, his livestock, and his health. But the end of the story is that Job never curses God. So God watches Job suffer with silent compassion and admiration until the time comes to give Job back everything he lost and more. So as you can tell from the story, this book is not only super complex, but it's also very disturbing. This is sort of why I'm reading a commentary on it. And there was one line in this commentary that has imprinted upon my conscience for probably ever. So this commentary said that a man may stand before God stripped of everything that life has given him and still lack nothing. So how the flip does this relate to this painting? Well, I was thinking in painting and whenever I'm painting, there's a sense that the next brush stroke is gonna end in total disaster and it's gonna ruin the whole painting. So each brush stroke is basically made from a place of fear. And it causes me to be super conservative in my approach and timid in my ideas. So the main issue here is a fear of loss. I'm fearing that I'm gonna lose everything and have to start over again. But even if I have to trash this painting, what have I lost? I never had the painting to begin with. So the idea that I can secure this painting by being timid and afraid is sort of stupid. I think instead a healthier mindset is that I have been given a blank canvas. And so if I have to go back to just having a blank canvas, I'll have lost nothing. I mean, really, it's only by grace that I'm given another blank canvas so that I can start over. I would just encourage you to slap paint on the canvas, mess up, do different brush strokes, do crazy textures, enjoy life, enjoy art. You're no less of an artist because you have to go back to the blank canvas. The blank canvas is our hope because as artists, you can stand stripped of every piece of art you have created and still lack nothing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you're super encouraged to go paint. And as always, like, subscribe, comment. Don't like, don't subscribe, don't comment. Be true to yourself. Later.